Okay. Uh, yeah, we will again. So this last uh, session today is uh, related to mid infrared photonic, uh, photonic integration technologies. And uh, well, a little bit of motivation, why to use mid infrared photonics for sensing. I will tell you about the emerging technologies and which are the, the uh, ingredients that you use to make uh, a mid infrared photonics uh, sensing uh, device. So motivation for sensing in the mid infrared. Basically, mid infrared wavelengths are interesting because there are many gases that have fundamental vibrations on that wavelength range. Okay, not only chemical but also biological molecules that have a strong absorption lines in the mid infrared. Plus, there are atmospheric transmission windows in between 3.5 microns and 8, 14 microns. So it actually, with mid infrared photonics, you can sense even through the atmosphere at those wavelengths, at the different, uh, different uh, yeah. so applications. Well, there are many. In industry, for instance, process control, exploration and extraction, <coughs> maintenance and surveillance, security and safety, environmental things like gas emission monitoring, air quality, water quality, in healthcare for blood analysis, breath analysis, hospital air quality, in vivo imaging, and in transport for engine design, vehicle emission, and fuel control. So you can see some pictures, fancy pictures here, courtesy of this project, which is MIRFAD, a big project in Europe, uh, which uh, is uh, starting to, uh, uh, to offer services to manufacture mid infrared sensors. Uh, these applications I have already uh, said several of them before. And uh, this is also uh, possible because of spectroscopy. Most of you know what is spectroscopy. I'm not going to to stay here for long. Basically, it is devoted to identify elements and compound because of the different wavelengths, okay? Basically, I will skip this one of the properties of light. You know very well what it is. Only I will tell that in most of the spectrums that you will see in the documentation references products, instead of wavelength, the wave number is used, which is the, the inverse of wavelength, actually inverse of wavelength in such a way that the energy is proportional to that wave number, basically. Okay? And then, let me recall a little bit uh, the mechanisms of interaction of light with matter, depending on the energy. Okay? Depending on the energy, you have ionization, you have electron level changes, you have molecular vibrations, and you have molecular rotation, rotation and torsion depending on the wavelength. You can see that electron level changes are uh, more for ultraviolet wavelengths, whereas molecular vibrations are more in the infrared. In any case, uh, the total potential energy of a molecule is the sum, the sum of all the energies due to electronic transition, vibrational and rotational uh, movements. So, since electronic energy is larger than vibrational and rotational, that means that all these things that happen in a molecule, all these things that happen in a molecule, can be uh, distinguished because of the energy. That means that electronic transitions, for instance, in, in this picture from from Alde, happen in the ultraviolet, uh, in the ultraviolet, and could be identified with ultraviolet light. And uh, but the fact, the true fact is that all of them happen together. And instead of having only electronic energy levels, uh, you have many energy levels and many transition energies between electronic, vibrational, and rotational. So actually, your spectrum is pretty complex. It is not that you can isolate the electronic or the vibrational or the rotational specifically. Right. So if we have a look again to the, to the optical spectrum, we see that the uh, the the vibrations due to tri tripolar cumulative double bonds in, in molecules or CCCO bonds or fingerprint regions 
for, for unique, unique molecular uh, spectrum identifications are different. So this region is from the near infrared up to a wavelength of 5 microns, then between 5 and 6, all these uh, interesting carbon bonds can be identified, and for the rest, there is this region in between 6 uh, up to, I would say, nearly uh, 30 microns wave. Okay? So, I will skip uh, absorption because I think that uh, every, every one of you know what absorption is. As I said, this were prepared as a general lecture for maybe less trained uh, students. And I will skip the beer lambert law that you know and why it's preferred concentration. But basically, basically about the sample, what we would like to know, and this, this holds also for the biophotonics in some cases, uh, we want to know maybe uh, uh, if we are from optics, we would be happy knowing the index of refraction. Everything else is related to it. So we would like to use, uh, for instance, optical measurements like a reflectivity or transmission through a sample and from that uh, derive the refractive index, okay? But when it comes to, to molecules, for instance, I, I found very nice, this very nice slide on the internet. This is a CO2 molecule, and you can see the different, uh, the different uh, molecular vibrations. This is an asymmetric stretch, this is a symmetric stretch, vertical bend, horizontal bend, up and down. Each of them has uh, resonances or absorption peaks, absorption peaks, resonances, a different, a different wavelengths or wave number, okay? So, coming back again to the one that relates to technologies, we've seen that uh, this mid infrared thing uh, would be good for sensing and determining which molecule is this and that, but if we want to do that on a photonic integrated circuit, which materials can we use, okay? So, mid infrared starts uh, around here, around 2.5, Four, depending on who you ask, okay, let's say four. So basically materials that cover that range are germanium and silicon. So no 3-5 semiconductors as we know them, later on we will see that 3-5 devices as we know them, like, like, the, like the diode lasers or the, or the diode photo detectors. Uh, not the silicon nitride on top of silicon oxide, we'll discuss later, not the silicon on top of silicon oxide. So, which materials are then good for mid infrared in general? I already said germanium, silicium, uh, germanium and silicon, but why? Well, there are many, many types of material, glass and crystalline materials, and you can see the transparency ranges and the wavelength here. But there are a, a several few, like silicon, germanium, gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, which can be used in those wavelength ranges, but that that are also amenable for manufacturing in, uh, in uh, using photolithography steps. So once again, one uh, key determination factor for deciding on a material system is if they can be produced in mass, in mass volumes, okay? So both silicon and germanium, gallium arsenide and indium phosphide can, okay? Now if you compare both the three fives, the three fives and the, and the group four, uh, elements, three pipes and the silicon and the germanium. Well, there is a, there is a, a little bit more of drawbacks for the, for the three pipes. Why? Well, let's start from the bottom. They are expensive and, and fragile. That is true, we discussed it yesterday, in your phosphide is pretty fragile technology. They have not uh, been to the microelectromechanical systems technology, so there is no microelectromechanical systems done on these uh, 3 pi semiconductors. But they have advantages. You can get a fully monolithic photonic integrated circuit. We've seen several that I've shown in the microwave photonics talk with the laser, the detector, everything on the same chip. That's an advantage. They allow for, for emission and detection of light and and the, the material and the band gap is very well, well known, okay? But on the other hand, silicon and germanium are well established because they are used to make this, again. And now uh, they, have also, they can do also microelectromechanical that for doing switches it is really, really nice. What you can do with these materials is that they are actually, you fa can fine tune the combinations to make them uh, widely transparent in the mid infrared, something that uh, you cannot do, for instance, with the three fives. But for instance, they don't have emission and detection in the mid infrared. Okay, detection they have with germanium, they have in the near infrared. So the technologies that we have available as generic technologies and multi-project wafers, and that we discussed in 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 the introductory talk, 
uh, that use materials which are transparent in the mid infrared. Okay, so here you have the different materials and the wavelength. And uh, this uh, light shaded rectangle is it is transparent. This orange rectangle means it, it, it is not transparent anymore. So you have uh, well, germanium tin alloy, but you have germanium and silicon. Germanium is transparent from 2 microns up to uh, nearly 15 microns. Silicon from 1 up to 9, I would say, more or less, 8, 9. But then you have an issue here. Mm -hmm. Typically, silicon, silicon and silicon nitride are surrounded by silicon dioxide in most of the photonic integration platforms that we're using uh, nowadays for biophotonics and for telecom. But the silicon dioxide is starts to absorb strongly um, close to 4 microns. Okay, and you can see here, this is the paper and the reference is here. This is uh, 2, this is 3.7 and then at 4 already the absorption is very strong. Okay, so this is absorption, nothing and a lot. So, so, you need to build a platform without silicon oxide, that's the message. Despite silicon oxide, it's a very convenient material and it is very well controlled. You need to build a platform without the silicon oxide. Uh, you could also use sapphire uh, and, and you could also use silicon nitride. Look, silicon nitride is also transparent from the visible up to seven. But when you surround it with the silicon oxide again, the silicon oxide absorbs all the light. Okay, so uh, the message is use materials that uh, do not have absorption in the mid infrared, which is something uh, obvious. Uh, then most of the of the research that I have seen so far is in using germanium silicon and combinations that cover these these bands for molecular vibrations in the mid infrared. For instance, the, the uh, people at IMEC at the University of Ghent they are proposing the three different platforms. Okay for the different parts of the spectrum. You can see here a similar graph to, to mine where I show the applications biophotonics, telecom, and, and sensing, okay? For telecom, they use silicon on insulator, that is silicon on silica. Then for visible applications for biophotonics, they use silicon nitride on silicon dioxide. And then for uh, uh, mid infrared photonics, they are proposing the use of germanium on silicon, okay? Germanium has an index of, of 4, refractive index of 4 approximately, and uh, silicon has an index of 3.5. So comparatively, if you compare this platform with this platform, silicon has an index of 3.5, as I said, and silica has uh, 1.45. So the refractive index contrast in this platform is larger than in this platform, meaning that germanium on silicon circuits will be comparatively larger than the other ones used in telecom. So that's, that's maybe a main issue, okay? The index contrast. This is four, this is 3.5, so it can die, but index contrast is an issue. Uh, University of Southampton is another research group that is strongly researching on, on, uh, on, uh, on mid infrared photonics. Maybe people at IMEC is more for the sensing and the, uh, and the people at Southampton is for telecom in the mid infrared. And uh, they provided this nice slide where you can see silicon on insulator that's only reach up to 3.7, I would say. Uh, silicon on sapphire can reach a little bit more. I think that this is aluminum oxide. I, I don't remember by heart. But this is a crystalline material with orientation and polarization dependency. And then there is a silicon membrane, which is something that I will mention later on, and germanium of silicon that I have already mentioned. So, uh, and they have marked this because uh, uh, the, an important thing in the mid infrared is which sources and detectors I'm going to use. It is not only the passive platform to guide the light and process light, but which, is, which device is going to generate the light and which device is going to detect the light, okay? Let's stay with the passive platforms and uh, let's talk about something similar to this one. We said that uh, silicon is transparent, but if we surround it by silicon dioxide, silicon dioxide is is uh, absorbs. Is there a way to make something which is only silicon? Yes. There is a silicon membrane. Okay, silicon membrane is um, is a piece of silicon that is surrounded by air. You can see here a picture of the final fabrication. All is silicon except this rectangle here is air. 
and on top is air as well. And how they fabricated this in this paper, they used two wafers. Okay? They used one, one first wafer, okay? And they etched the trenches. Okay? And they use another wafer, they flip it upside down, they glue them, okay? So they etch the trenches, they, they put the second wafer, they etch away all the bottom silicone, all the silicon dioxide, and uh, leave the, the silicon, which was on top, on the other side, here. And they, on this top silicon, they etch the wafer. So they have the, the trenches with air below, the silicon membrane on top, and then the wave guide. So that is one way of doing it. Problems with etching, uh, etching, uh, uh, or with with combining two wafers alignment. Okay, you need to have a very good alignment to align your wave guides on top of the trenches. Okay, that's a problem. So there is an alternative to this, which is to create sort of a pedestal wave guide. Basically, you start with uh, with uh, uh, silicon uh, silicon wafer, silicon crystalline silicon. You do a photoresistor, malloxide, and then basically you etch everything away until you are left with the, such of this pillar. Okay. Problems of, of this? Well, basically, when when you etch these kind of things that do these things, uh, the, the, this is dependent on the density of things. Where there is more density, they are less edge. When there is less density, they are more edge even broken up completely. So this also has some, some fabrication difficulties. We are, in our group, we are trying to think on, on sort of, of wafer scale, uh, wafer scale, so actually drawbacks are here, you need to wafer, you need to bond, you need to align. On the other one, you need to control edging because some dense, dense areas will be edged more than others. So, uh, there are other alternatives, I don't have any slide here, uh, that depart only from a single wafer, from a single wafer, you etch your waveguide, but you etch some holes around, and through the holes, you can etch the bottom of the waveguides, okay? This is also a lot of fantasy as well, but it's, it's being done, and it has some drawbacks as well, and I think that we're going to, we're going to try that uh, we're going to try that for the material that not one is looking at, which is this one. Okay, this one is totally transparent, from the visible to seven microns. We can do same thing as this with silicon nitride, and we're, we're going to do in the coming year. Uh, for your reference, uh, since I've been uh, spotting a lot of references the past year for the for the medium current. I leave you with this table, which is uh, the group that, uh, that originated the paper, the link to the paper, substrate, core, cladding, type of waveguide, waveguide width, waveguide head, propagation loss, and waveguide. Okay? I have ordered them in, uh, in order of increasing waveguide. So you can see from uh, 2.6 up to 10 microns. Okay? And not all of them are, are CMOS compatible materials, but they are for your reference. For instance, you you can see here like a, 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 I will see, chloride, uh, silver chloride, silver chloride and, and silver, silver bromide waveguides. Okay. For instance, the, the silicon on air pedestal waveguide is here, 2.7 microns, uh, no, 2.7 uh, dB centimeters at 3.7 microns, and the, uh, the membrane is here. It is 2.8 dB centimeter at, at 3.4 micron wave. Is there any question? <coughs> no? So that, that this is the state of the art of passive and the research trends just for you to, to be updated and, and to see what is happening in the medium infrared. But in the medium infrared, there there have been also a lot of research, not only on the on the passive waveguides on the PIC for being handling for, for combining the wavelengths, the, 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 the power of the signals, but it has also been a lot of research in the past years on the sources and the detectors. Okay, um, so basically, to build a, a medium infrared lab on a chip, you require maybe a, a, an array of lasers, which are usually uh, 
DFB quantum cascade lasers. I'll discuss a little bit about them later. You need some passive circuit, but you also need, again, a sort of uh, uh, a gas or fluidics on top of your chip, as well as detectors which can be microphones. I have not uh, very much information on that, because recently, this was a proposal a few years ago, but recently they have uh, demonstrated uh, quantum cascade detectors as well. So, so everything can be done with quantum cascade technology. So, this is the vision of, again, this project, MIRFA, where they envisage the use of, of different combination of things. MIRFA is a project uh, that you can go uh, to apply for, for, uh, for a manufacturing of your sensor. Okay? They, uh, they offer uh, a sources, uh, regular, uh, regular DFD lasers in this wavelength range and quantum cascade lasers in the long wavelength range. They offer as passives, as I said, like, uh, like I make and again mentioned, si silicon and insulator for the short wavelength range, silicon germanium for sil si silicon germanium or silicon for the mid wave range, and germanium or silicon for the long wave range. But they also offer detectors like quantum cascade detectors and super lattice detectors. I'm not familiar with that technology, by the way, and cells to make uh, the, the gas and the fluid. So basically, they, uh, they will, uh, depending on the, the sensor that you are targeting, that means on the molecule that you need to detect, for instance, by absorbance, okay, they will recommend or you will select one of combination of, of these technologies, which are the, the ones that you need to put together to build your sensor. The quantum cascade <coughs> lasers, you know that regular lasers, <coughs> conventional lasers, Emission is is uh, is controlled by the band gap. Okay, so actually the energy difference between the balance band and the conduction band. Uh, band gap engineering depends on, on layer thickness. If it changes layer thickness, then it's difficult. I mean to to control the band gap. And uh, uh, but despite this, it is really straightforward to make uh, multiple uh, multiple wavelengths with the same with the same technology. But is there a way to, to create a laser without engineering band gap? The answer is yes. It's a quantum cascade laser, which is actually a, a layer of materials of different band gaps. Okay? So you can see here, this is a band gap, this is another band gap, another band gap, another band gap. Okay? Same band gap, I would say same band gap, but the different energy levels. So actually, electrons are transitioning in energy progressively up to the recombination area, and there they are recombined in a given wavelength. So you can engineer the transition of electron energy from this energy to this energy, same on the other side. So you are somehow engineering a, a false band gap with a, a layer material. Okay? This uh, was proposed a long time ago in 1994, a famous science paper on quantum gas scale lasers, and currently it's, it's commercial. You can buy them elsewhere. And the good thing is that they are emitting, or they are of wide use in the mid infrared. You can see here four microns, 18 microns. I mentioned at the introduction that uh, atmospheric absorption is uh, is low on, on uh, different wavelengths. No, this is transmission. Sorry. So atmospheric transmission is is very good in some wavelength ranges. So for instance, you can uh, go at the wavelength range close to nine and use a quantum cascade laser designed for this wavelength to detect CO2 gas, or NH3 here as well, or several gases, okay? And the good thing is that they are slightly tunable because they are DFD, so you can tune them by temperature or by injection current, like uh, one to four nanometers. So they have uh, some scanning, scanning uh, uh, capability, okay? So either the quantum cascade sources or the, uh, or the, uh, or the, uh, typical or traditional place. For integrated photonics, the, the different platforms, even there is an additional platform in this project which is with micro-optics, which is micro-optics, free space optics that covers all the wavelength range. But the functionalities that you can find in these platforms is everything that you can draw on top of a chip, like you do it in, in near infrared or invisible. You can draw AWGs, 
you can draw splitters, you can draw waveguides, of course, waveguides, NWDs, splitters, etc. Passives, okay? Passives. It is true that they are also provide on cheap gas cells uh, for reference, okay? So you can have uh, you can have an on cheap gas cell. You you shine your laser through it, and by measuring the spectrum, you can see how your laser is drifting or not, okay? By the relative absorption. Detectors, as I said, mostly enforcing right now quantum cascade detectors. But one of the things is that these detectors should be unpooled. Okay, should be unpooled or temperature pooled, but operating not at cryogenic temperatures. Okay. And uh, okay, that's uh, that is uh, leads to uh, the end of this talk on my infrared uh, photonics. As I said at the introduction, they are interesting because many things can be sensed on those wavelengths and also it can be, uh, sensors can be used to the atmosphere. These are the possible applications, many of them, trace gas sensing, chemical, biological sensing, environmental, industrial process control, diagnosis, communications, defense, astronomy is one of the, of the, of the ones that you can find in some literature as well. And in my uh, personal interest, uh, my personal view, this is interesting. Material systems for the integration, it's again, and I mentioned uh, uh, the other day, a combination of two. You need the passives in uh, silicon germanium, or maybe also silicon nitride membrane, I don't know. And, uh, and for the sources and detectors, you need three pipes. So, as you see, it is impossible to have everything monolithically integrated in a platform, so it's sort of a system on a package. Okay, again, one chip of, of this, one chip of that, one chip of that, alignment, group, a lot of stuff. Okay. And that's all. Any question? It, uh, this is the one more generalistic because uh, it's still... Uh, it's general view, yeah. It's general view. Silicon photonics has silicon oxide here and also here sometimes. But silicon oxide, uh, silicon oxide absorbs. It's transparent in the near infrared, but absorbs in the mid infrared. So if you want to be in the mid infrared, you cannot use silicon oxide. Okay, that is why you use, for instance, germanium and silicon, because they they are both. Uh, they are both transparent on the near infrared. That's the difference. You don't use silicon inside. Yes, please. I've seen some papers using aluminum oxide, yes. And it's also, up to some point, it's also CMOS compatible, but the processing of, of silicon and germanium is, is better known in final correct. Is it something that you know, I think that on the table, I think that on the table, yes, look, this one, sapphire, aluminum oxide. This one is, is, this one, aluminum oxide on the bottom. Okay, but but if I remember well, uh, the aluminum oxide uh, uh, has um, has um, has the lithium ion crystal interactions. So that means that if you make a bend, you're actually changing the. Okay.
the invitation again for attending. It was a pleasure. Unfortunately, there are no photographs for picture, but you can do it by also. Okay.